Hey guys, so today I'm going to um, do the art creation portion of my creative art box, basic box for April. And um, I am augmenting my box with a few extra things just to sort of um, make it stretch. I'm going to ink this sketch I did of my cat Bowie with some FW acrylic and I'm going to use some watercolors to do sort of a tone and then I'm going to do details with the Craypaw and I haven't used Craypaw in a really 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 long time so um, it might take some getting used to and I would like to be able to do some blending effects but unfortunately this is not an oil anything studio so I don't have the linseed oil and although I have some mineral spirits I'm not even sure if mineral spirits alone would really give me the effect I want so um, I'm gonna have to do my blending with my phalanges and um, maybe some blending stumps so I'm gonna get started by inking this sketch <laughs> guys so this needs to dry for 24 hours before I can do anything else with it and with acrylic ink you want to make sure you get all of it out of your inking brush because it can ruin it now I like to use brush soap on my brushes so I'm gonna go ahead and go do that right now um, because good inking brushes can be very expensive and I don't want it to get ruined I'll see you guys tomorrow with the next step in this uh, oil pastel mixed media uh, supply challenge thing. All right, bye. Hey guys, so my inked illustration for my creative art box has dried for 24 hours, so it's time to erase all those pencil lines and do my preliminary watercolor wash underneath. And on top of that, I'm going to play around with those oil crayons, those crayon that were sent to me in my April Creative Art Box. Alright, so I've got everything sort of brushed out of the way and I can get started painting. Alright, so to get this started, I'm using some Cotman watercolor paints. They're not my favorite paints, but my other paints are busy set up uh, in the area where I paint my watercolor pages, and I don't really want to disrupt them. And the Cotman paints also take up a lot less space. And I went ahead and I activated three of the colors um, that have analogs in my Craypaw set. And I'm going to go ahead and remove one of my mini palettes so I can use it. And for those of you who aren't really familiar with watercolor paints, the way you activate them is you put a couple of drops of water on them first and allow it to sort of um, reactivate the pigment inside. So I'm going to do an all over wash 
to give my illustration some tone using yellow ochre. And I'm going to go ahead and even though the paper is still wet, oh, I should have taped it down. Let me tape it down really quick using some washi tape. Usually I would use masking tape, but washi tape works just fine for this. It's a low tack tape. It should hold your paper down just fine since this Cotman watercolor paper is already starting to buckle. All right, so hopefully that will hold. And I'm going to go ahead and add in what looks like burnt sienna in a couple of areas and I want it to bleed out just a little bit so it'll add some some color and I'm going to go ahead and mix up it's not quite sepia it's not quite dark enough to be sepia but it is a dark brown and use it over here for shading and maybe use it as an all over wash on my cat Bowie. And I'm going to allow these to dry, I think, before I add in my next layer. Since everything has had a chance to dry, I can get going on uh, deepening some of these colors, adding some and I, intensity. And I don't want to do too much because I need there to be something for the, the oil pastels to do. So I just want to like hint at, at details and hint at that information. And if you haven't tried doing simple washes with watercolor yet, and this looks interesting to you, I highly recommend you go ahead and give it a shot. It's sort of a low risk proposition. And it can be a lot of fun. And if you're working small like this, it doesn't even have to take a lot of your time. And like I said, I want to encourage, where possible, uh, bleeding and blending and blooming. Unfortunately, it seems like Cotman watercolors on the Cotman paper want to soak in immediately, so there's not really a whole lot of interplay going on right now. Add a little bit of water and try to encourage at least some movement. And of course, these watercolors were not included in my April box. I'm using them as sort of a, an aid. have to admit when I first saw a box with just the multicultural colors in it I was a little bit uh, stymied I really didn't know what I could do with that um, usually when I have a limited color selection to deal with I do floral stuff um, but I didn't necessarily think that uh, a bunch of browns would really work well for flowers so I decided to add a few other common studio ingredients into the mix in hope that I felt a little more inspired. And um, those of you who commonly watch my videos know that I often have to do this with art snacks and sketchbox. 
it's probably a bit of a crutch for me, to be honest. All right, I'm gonna let this dry and then get back to it. All right, guys, that layer is dry and um, we almost might be at the point where it's time to break out those crepa. I'm going to do a couple of adjustments, just minor things, I think. And then let everything dry for a couple of hours so that it's really truly dry before I put the crepe paw on top. And I've never done mixed media between watercolor and oil pastel so this should be kind of interesting for me and it might not work we'll find out i do know that if i had done the oil pastel first it would have created a resist for the watercolor which could have been an interesting technique in and of itself so that's something to consider if you're playing around with oil pastels all right guys so we are finally at the point where we can start using the cray pot and I went ahead and I picked out the colors that I thought would best suit the watercolors that I have already laid down and I'm just looking up my reference I like to keep it handy all right there we go And I'm noticing that these oil pastels are pretty crumbly um, and they can be a little bit difficult to work with at this size. And I think I'm going to reserve my white as a blend, I mean, uh, um, for highlights. Now, I would like to start blending this out, but I'm not really a huge fan of using my phalanges for that sort of stuff. I like to keep my hands fairly clean when I work. So, I have some cheap makeup sponges that are pretty similar to um, the sort of blenders that are commonly used for blending chalk pastels. So I think I'll go ahead and give them a shot. Okay, all right, that's weird. These are just Equate, aha, I got it. Equate blender sponges that weren't properly separated, but you could probably use Dollar Tree as well. I'm gonna go ahead and start blending with my cheap sponge and what it really seems to be doing is erasing more so than really blending. Which I guess is fine because it'll sort of help me build up some nuance. Do any of you guys regularly use oil pastels? How about crepa? I know they're not, um, they're considered student grade rather than professional grade or high end, but I know uh, there are illustrators and artists who regularly use student grade materials because it behaves um, the way they want it to behave. All right, I have that first layer kind of blended out. Go ahead in there with the second and I'm sort of folding my makeup sponge to uh, get in those corners. I could switch over to a different makeup sponge, one of the, oh, they're not even on camera, never mind. But I think I like how this one handles fine. I'm 
I am finding it a little difficult to work this small with the cray paw. So if you're like me and you work small, you may have some difficulty. And the paper kind of buckling also makes it a little bit difficult to work with these. And this is the paper that was included in my creative art box. I did tape it down, but I didn't stretch it. Maybe I should have stretched it. Now, oil pastels really start to shine, at least with the, the um, student grade ones, when you've really built up a lot of color. Um, and given some of the limitations of this set, I'm a little hesitant to do that. Um, but I can definitely recommend that if you have the premium box, you should definitely try using the two sets together and building up your color because it's going to give a smoother blend. I'm sort of I'm sort of trying to blend out very little. of this watercolor paper is really good for grabbing your color pastel but you do end up getting a lot of white areas sort of like if you were using um, a wax crayon it's one of the reasons why I'm trying to blend out and one of the reasons why I did apply a watercolor wash first I wanted um, I wanted better coverage and I didn't want just the white of the paper to show up. Basically, wanted to start with sort of a toned surface and be able to build my way out of it, or rather build up the colors, build up forms. Also, being a bit cowardly because I haven't used oil pastels in a really long time and I don't necessarily have um, the best materials in my studio at this time to sort of demonstrate what you can do with even uh, student grade materials um, and I also have in general a very watercolor aesthetic and oil pastels are a very opaque medium but I am sure you can find lots of phenomenal inspiration on YouTube if you just look around. Hopefully this is just a starting point for you. Alright, so I am going to add some of the designs from this chair. It's a little bit difficult because these are so big it's hard to see what I'm doing. I'm going to add some of the designs from my chair into the background, well onto the chair. <laughs> and hopefully they'll turn out okay. And I'm going to try to blend some of them out because they do seem kind of... Actually, I'm going to switch over to the finer tip applicators. Let's see if this works any better. And like I said, I got these from Walmart. You can find them at Dollar Tree. 
Um, they're really inexpensive, but they're good if you don't want to invest a lot of money because you're not sure if you want to take up a particular medium. And they also are good if you're like me and you don't like getting your fingers too dirty because then it'll get all over everything. Fortunately, these are a little thin at the foam bit, so at the top where the plastic meets the foam. So I'm trying to use the side a little bit more for better blending. And I think all that's really left is to do another wash with the watercolor. All right, so I have my little watercolor set out again. And I tossed the palette somewhere to clean it. Ah, oh, there it is, perfect. Cotton palette for cotton paper. And I'm just going to hopefully build up some of the area on the blanket. And of course, there is a little bit of a resist. I told you guys that would happen because oil and water are not good friends and they don't like to mix. I think that's about it for my creative art box basic box for April this has been my creative art box challenge I'm Becca Hilburn I hope you guys enjoyed this video I'd like to thank creative art box for sending me their April box care of thank you very much guys I really enjoyed it um, and I hope I've inspired you guys I've um, maybe taught you guys something um, or I, edu I educated you guys, I don't know. Um, but I hope you come away from this video with more than you came in. And if you're interested in Creative Box, you can check out their site at creativebox.com, their Facebook at facebook.com slash creativeartbox, their Twitter at twitter.com slash creative underscore artbox, their Pinterest at Pinterest.com slash Creative Art Box. Their Instagram at Instagram.com slash Creative Art Box. And you can check out my blog, madisoup.blogspot.com, for more on April's Art Box. Um, I hope you guys have a great day. I'll see you later in other videos. And I say that as I notice an area that had been taped down that I'm like, oh, I want to pop some color on there. Anyway, guys, goodbye.